Hey guys, Silhouette here, coming at you with a brand new video and a new focus on PSO2. With the recent advent of Fantasy Star Online 2 in the West some few months ago, I've been very happy to re-experience this game all over again. I played a lot on the JP version, and it's really nice to be able to do so without relying on fan translations and hopping across the digital ocean on the internet. That said, I do want to say that Ark Slayer and the Fantasy Star Fleet have been a tremendous help in keeping the Western fanbase for this game alive for the past eight years, in lieu of Sega and their silence on the matter for so long. I definitely want to give them a shout out. With the game finally on Western shores, however, comes a new player base, many of whom don't have the same experiences of having played the JP version, and some of which are even enjoying their first entry in the series of Fantasy Star. I've often found that many new players, and even some veterans of the series, fall into some of the same pitfalls, including yours truly. For that reason, I've decided to start focusing on putting out content for PSO2, as not only do I really enjoy playing the game, but I also want to help spare some of our newer community and some of our older community the same griefs that I had when I first started. So without any further ado, let's get into it. If you've been playing PSO2 with any level of consistency, you've probably been bombarded with plenty of dropped items and found them clogging your limited inventory space fairly often, especially if you've been picking up everything you've seen. Unfortunately, in PSO2, inventory space is a very valuable resource, especially as a free player when you only have 40 slots in your person and a limited number in storage as well. Because of this, filling up your inventory is a fairly common problem that can have you wrestling with what to throw out and what to send to storage, and this can sometimes become exacerbated and lead you to having less fun with the game. We definitely want to avoid that. The easiest way to deal with this problem is to recognize its source. The truth of the matter is that not everything that drops in PSO2 is a worthwhile item. As you begin to rise through your character's levels, You'll notice that you are most likely finding new equipment that is better in every way than the equipment that you just picked up a few levels ago. Similarly, you'll likely notice that most equipment isn't very valuable, especially if you've checked the player markets for those items. A quick way to sort items at lower levels is to simply only pick up what you need. Most weapons of 9 star and below, denoted on the item status page as red, green, and blue stars, generally become next to worthless eventually. While it is perfectly fine to use a weapon you just found on the ground if it is legitimately better, most better weapons or units will usually be easily found in boss loot, and you only need one or three of each if, in the case of units. This means you can usually ignore weapon and loot units that dropped by individual mobs outside of boss fights. If you're interested in filling out your item compendium, you can just get one of each and ignore the rest once you're able to recognize them. A lot of furniture dropped by bosses or common enemies, or in boxes, is the same way. It's nice to have one, but they don't tend to be valuable in any way, so you can kind of ignore them. Discs, on the other hand, are only worth stockpiling past level 11, and even then you can either sell them or break them down for disc fragments in your personal quarters, which stack easier. A key exception is when the item you have has a particularly valuable augment. Useful and valuable augments tend to be very specific and are often found in the form of boss souls, although there are a few more, such as Doombreak. They usually have a unique name, although not all unique names are particularly valuable. These will be good to save for yourself, or to sell if you happen to be able to open a shop eventually. With time, you'll start to recognize these augments as they drop. Once you start getting 10-star weapons and units with some level of regularity, you'll have more reason to consider picking them up, and you'll be more experienced with their worth and able to judge whether or not you actually need or want them. Typically, once you're all maxed out on levels, you're aiming for much higher prizes. These items are usually only picked up in order to exchange them for EX cubes, or other items in the swap shop, such as photon spheres or lambda grinders, which are valuable for different reasons in their own right. In case you weren't aware, you can send items from your inventory to your storage from just about anywhere by opening your inventory, selecting the item, and choosing Deposit, and then selecting the preferred storage. Speaking of... Let's say you've been avoiding plenty of items, but you've still managed to fill up your inventory just so. This happens to the best of us. Uh, whether you're running about in the field or you just popped a boss, boss crystal and you're trying to quickly grab up all the items and sort through them so that your party, before your party actually goes and retries, 
it can be very stressful to deal with that kind of pressure um, but the good news is that you don't have to provided you have the storage space you can actually select multiple items in your inventory by either pressing the right trigger or holding shift on the keyboard on each item you want to select and then you can send them all to storage by pressing deposit and going to default storage or any storage you'd like actually so to character storage you can also select multiple items in a sequence by holding down the right trigger or you know holding down shift and clicking the first item to the last item and it'll do the same you are able to select multiple items in that same sequence it's very useful this is a great way to speed up your looting because you can simply grab the items you want or need and toss them in your stores to deal with like if you're in a boss and like hundreds of items to drop 30 ex cubes as i like to call them the 10 star weapons you know it can really be applied to most other menus where you can select things including the exchange item shop or you know uh when you're trying to appraise items it's an excellent ability that isn't told to you much at all in the game as far as i know it doesn't come up there's no tutorial it's something that i pass by for many months without ever knowing about and it's a real shame because that's an amazing thing you can do that will speed up your time so much just to be able to send these back and forth by selecting multiple items. Moving on, the next thing is something I've come to regret later on in my time in PSO2 especially because um, I've used several of these in my time as a newer player and didn't really realize the significance of it or didn't really understand how they worked when you used one but didn't use another one uh, and how that applies to all characters on your account. Uh, basically is having frivolously used up consumable tickets for character appearances items. Uh, most appearance items come in the form of a consumable ticket, including accessories, hair, head parts, layered wear for both base wear and inner wear, facial features, and body paint. Uh, emotes as well, uh, things like that. In all cases besides emotes, the ticket only gives the listed appearance item to the character it is used on, unless you somehow manage to get another ticket. As you can see, uh, let me see if I can find one. Here we are. You can see right here, down at the bottom, it says use status unused. Using this will bind it to your character. Uh, when you attempt to use this, let's see, here we go. When you attempt to use this, it will pop up a confirm item use pop-up saying, once you use this ticket, you will be able to select with all characters by using the same ticket with the same character or another character. Now, that's pretty straightforward when you take a second and you think about it, but a lot of times, you know, the text and the item description can be kind of uh, confusing for newer players just because of how it's worded, because of how it's broken up, uh, how the software turns are placed in it and all that stuff. Uh, worse yet is the eventual regret that you eventually have from having used some rare or otherwise unobtainable ticket that you only got once on a character you didn't want it on. For example, my character here, Ursus, has a very limited Will of the Wisp blue uh, a consumable item, a, a, an appearance thing, that I would much rather have had on Amhara, but for some reason I assumed that as I was newer, that I would be able to use that later on another character. That was my mistake and I've learned from it, but hopefully you won't have to learn from it too. It should also be mentioned that the fresh find shop and scratch bonus items are particularly notorious for this, um, unless it, because unless they're re-released at some point, you have no way of obtaining a second ticket. You can't get it on another character, you can't get it uh, from the player markets, they're untradeable. So you only get one. Say I wanted to buy this drone item here. I can only get one. That means only one of my characters will ever get this item unless it, you know, very, uh, it's possible, I guess, but it would probably be way down the line. I might miss it. It might come out again. Uh, so it's very important to keep that in mind and make sure you only apply these items to the characters that you really, really, really want them on, especially if you're trying to go with a certain fashion motif or something like that. After all, fashion is the true endgame. Another thing that I didn't come to know about until much later into my time in PSO2 is stackable buffs. Now this can apply to one of two things. Uh, we'll discuss both. The first is that there are several kinds of buffs called triboosts that come from different sources. Uh, they're called triboosts because they affect your meseta drop rate, your experience gain, and your rare drop rate all at the, by the same amount, usually displayed by the amount listed. For example, this is plus 50%. 
While the most common form of tri-boost that may be familiar with you is often in the form of a consumable boost item, you can also get tri-boost buffs from doing daily missions, from running a party, uh, and from purchasing premium. As you can see here, I have three of those, an EX tri-boost from a ticket, a daily tri-boost effect that I get from my uh, dailies, a premium tri-boost here. You can also get a party tri-boost effect that is not shown here uh, by being in a party with up to four players. You can technically get this from being with partners, like NPC characters, but the boost is much smaller and is not nearly as effective. Tickets with different buff names stack, as you saw with my EX tri-boost and the other tri-boosts. Um, keep in mind that they have to have a different buff name. It can't just have different percentages of buffs. So you can't stack two different EX tri-boosts, one with 50%, one with 100, one with 150. You have to stack tri-boost with EX tri-boost. The other aspect of stacking buffs is that you can actually consume several of the same buff ticket in short succession, with each consumed ticket extending the duration of the original buff. This can be used to apply, quickly apply several long-lasting buffs to the same character, allowing for longer rounds and not having to worry about losing a boost during a mission or right before defeating the boss. For example, we'll go into our inventory here, and as you can see I have 14 EXP earned uh, plus 150% tickets, as well as 50 uh, or 28 rare drop rate plus 50% tickets. I can use each of these, and if I wait just a short little bit of time, I think it's only a few seconds, you can start using more of them. And you'll be able to see once I go into my character info menu, I now have these two at a much higher extended duration, uh, and 120 minutes and 60 minutes. That can go pretty high if we keep using them. But sometimes you do hit an arbitrary ceiling where you can't use any more of them. As you can see, I can still use the rare drop rate one. If I wait a couple seconds, I can do another one. Uh, we go into our character info, and now my rare drop rate is at 120 minutes. I think that might actually be about where it stops. As you can see, I can no longer use these. 120 minutes, uh, 2 hours roughly, it is the maximum that you can boost these up to. But that's a pretty good bit. Um, it can help you keep your inventory space down. It can help you keep longer buffs so that you don't end up with it running out mid-mission. Because uh, some missions can be particularly long. You can forget about it sometimes. 2 hours is a good span of time to have these buffs continually going. The next item on our list is collection sheets, or more specifically, how they work. Uh, for the longest time in JP, I never really figured these out. I didn't understand what I needed to do. I think the objectives for these were actually much more complex in JP, although I'm sure there were still pretty early ones that were just as easy as they are now for NA. Um, but basically, collection sheets are a means of getting some relatively decent set items by doing otherwise normal and mundane things that you do every day, like do expeditions, or killing enemies, or doing urgent quests when they pop up. They aren't strictly necessary, uh, I mean, but you're basically getting free items of really decent quality, usually by doing things you'd already be doing. They will carry you for a while, especially if you just pick up one of these. If you're level 30 and you get a shot Revolzio plus 30, you're not going to be doing terrible damage for your level, you're going to be doing great. So these are always great to do, plus they fill out your weapon compendium. A lot of these are really hard to get uh, at the levels that you'll get them at. Plus 30 is, you can grind up to that, it's pretty easy, but for a weapon like this that's 14 stars, no, 13 stars, excuse me, that's going to take a lot of Lambda Grinders, which are a fairly, uh, you know, great resource that cost a lot to obtain. You have to pay to star gems or exchange them or things like that. You know, it's, it's very important that you, you take what shortcuts you can, and this is a great way to get a weapon that's at grind level 30 and has a great melee attack power or, you know, a ranged attack power, whatever it happens to have, for next to nothing. Um, it is just a wonderful way of getting this, and it's not just limited to weapons, you can also get really decent rarity eggs, too, for the summoners out there. You know, uh, you want a Jenga egg? There you go, 13 stars is not a bad place to start. It's actually a really great thing. Um, and even if you don't want to do any of that, you don't want to use any of these items, you don't want to use Redran, the cool little dragon pet that he is, um, these are still worth doing just for the fact that you're going to be doing these things anyways, and you can still get these for your weapon compendium, which will give you titles, will give you buffs to certain weapon groups. Um, they're just all around a good thing to be doing, and it's very easy to forget that they even exist. 
So uh, if you're a new player, get on these. You're going to be doing them anyways, and they don't take up any other slots. You can do about five of them at a time. As you can see, I've got my Sword Revulsio, Lance Revulsio, Storm Revulsio, Blade Revulsio, and Shot Revulsio all set. Um, and as you can see, when I confirm it, it basically shows you what you need to do to get them. Um, this one is Urgent Quests, and that includes Trigger Quests. This one is I have to kill enemies. Um, the incre uh, increase amount varies by enemy level, so if you kill higher ones, it's better. Uh, and the last one is Expeditions. I need to do those better. I need to do more of them. Uh, but these are pretty easy. Plus, you don't only get the Shot Revulsio. These items down here, the required items, it's a little confusing, but those aren't actually required to get this. You just need to complete these objectives. the uh, Doing a certain amount of Expeditions, doing a certain amount of Urgent Quests, doing a certain amount of killing a certain amount of enemies. These are just bonus items that you get as you complete those tasks. They'll show up in the uh, at the end of a mission in like uh, white, uh, in a, with a white glow. And once you've done that, once all these three are marked complete, um, this will give you, be given to you once you come in and you exchange it. Uh, and like I said, really great for a free weapon, basically, because you're already doing the stuff that you you would do to get these things. There's really no reason to pass it up. And if you start early, you'll have yourself a really good library of a library, maybe a weapons closet of great items and summoner eggs. It really is something that you should start early on and keep doing as you go on because it's just it's free stuff. This next one is for our premium members, although free players can also make use of this if they happen to get a personal shop ticket. Like all items in this video, this one is a bit obscure and you wouldn't be faulted for missing it. I'm really surprised that some of these features didn't end up in a tutorial somewhere in the game, but hey, what can you do? Anyways, getting right to it, when you're setting your price for an item in your shop, let's go see if we can find an item to sell, after I put in my handy dandy pin number, of course. Um. Yeah, let's open up our shop. We're going to go to Manage, Shop, View Sales. Wait, not View Sales. Whoops. Uh, let's go to Put Items Up From Storage. And let's say we want to put up this Cafe Chef hat. Okay? When you're setting the price in your shop, your first instinct is probably just to go ahead and, you know, check the market. See what they're selling for. In this case, 1.1 million. And you come back and you would, you know, manually set this number. It's a little bit arbitrary. You have to, there's like a tax on it, basically. You have to go down a little bit and all this good stuff over and over and over and that's a real drag it's an unfortunate bit of work that a lot of players accidentally themselves into it's definitely not the easiest way to do this the easiest way to do this uh, is when you're checking the price you just select the item that you that is closest to the price you want say you're wanting to beat this guy at the lowest possible price you want to be the lowest one on the market so that your sells very quickly just select that that one and it'll add that that item's total uh, minus the tax you know so that's actually competitive to your price and you can just go down one number if you really wanted to be cheeky about it but you know you can go down a couple if you want to make it not so obvious very simple very easy uh, it's a very useful way of dealing with this problem um, I say a problem it's just something that you know again a tutorial would not have gone amiss Sega I don't know why this is in there somewhere uh, it's a very helpful thing. Maybe there is one and I just missed it, but uh, I haven't come across it in the years that I played JP or NA, and it's something that saves you so much time, especially if you just happen to want to sell a bunch of these AC items that you sat on for a couple of months to get them out there and you just wanted to make a cool 17 million, wow, 17 million pop load up, jeez. Uh, <laughs> If you just wanted to make, uh, you're selling a lot of them at once, you just got to throw them out there. That's how you do it. You grab other prices and you base them off of those. It's a very easy thing to do, very helpful. And I really think that this is something that more people should know about. And it will help you in the long run when it comes to your business empire in PSO2. This one has been done to death, but for good reason. I'm joining the chorus of doubtless numerous YouTubers and PSO veterans to tell you, of course, to plan your mag carefully. It's a very important thing to do as mags are one of the few things that determine what is effectively your character's base stats and attributes as the value is added directly to yours. The ideal mag setup is highly recommended to be a purely in a single stat. As you can see from these two, I have a level 200 range support and a level 200 tech support. 
Uh, these, these stats tend to be usually corresponding to your class's main mode of damage. For example, you want to use melee for hunter and fighter, you want to use ranged for ranger and gunner, tech for force, techer, and summoner, and finally, dex for braver and bouncer. <clears throat> this is because the way PSO2 plays out, your damage output is the largest contributor to your character by far. While there are some uh, sometimes variations in this, such as if you're going with a melee-focused Tekker or a Katana-focused Braver, it still stands that you should always have your mag dedicated to one stat in order to be most effective. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it is something that will make your time in the game easier in the long run and much more enjoyable. Uh, now here's where I'll deviate from the other Voices of Reason. There are charts out there that will tell you exactly what items you need to feed your mag in succession in order to carefully and painstakingly raise your mag's ideal stat while reducing others. For example, you want to use uh, two of these Ardillo, Ard, Ard, Ardillos, Ardillos, one of them, to get them uh, a, a couple of melee levels, but you want to be watch out because if you feed them the third one, as you can see, it's going to raise his dex up and over a level, which is not what we want, because that's not going to be a pure stat mag at that point. And the problem with this is that, as you can see, it fills up the energy bar, which means that you can you have to wait for this to decrease a certain amount before you can feed them again. You also run the risk of having this part right here level up as well, and you don't want dex, you don't want tech, you don't want range, you want melee. You know, you want to hit stuff, you're a hunter, you're a, you're a fighter. You don't want anything, you're a katana braver, you know what I mean? You don't want to have to you know, deal with all that. That's honestly unnecessary. Um, while you could do that, you could go out there and grab those charts and follow those things. And if you're up for the challenge, absolutely go for it. It's a lot of fun, I'm sure. Um, there's a really easier way to do this. The easiest way, frankly, is to go to the player shops, and these are relatively inexpensive, is to grab food devices. Let me put in my pin number one more time here. There we go. Let's go and look for a food device. There are several of them and they all correspond to each stat. So as you can see, there's Dex and Dex Mini, Melee Attack and Melee Mini, Range Attack, Range Mini, Tech Attack, Tech Mini. And there's a couple others. The easiest ones to get, the cheapest ones are gonna be your Range Minis. Say we were doing Melee, go grab some Melee Minis. As you can see, one of them costs maybe 9,000 Meseta. Not a hard amount, especially if you've been doing your dailies, your weeklies, and you've been getting money. Um, you can probably afford quite a few of these pretty easily. That's just under a million to get 99 of them. And what these devices will do, say we just, uh, let's just buy a couple of them. Make that guy happy. Thanks, buddy. And we go out here to our mag. And we just use the device from the use the device menu. This is important because, uh, it's not feeding the, it's not feeding the, the mag. Feeding it will increase the energy and you can't use, you can't feed more stuff to it when you are, when its energy is full. Instead, we use the device and as you can see, it levels it up pretty, pretty good actually. Look at that, two whole levels and almost a third one from just one device. And you can just keep chunking these in there rapidly if you want to. And it will keep jumping, keep going, it will not stop. It is a wonderful way to like raise your mag's level in a specific stat without having to worry about it going up in a different stat that you don't want, or it having to get full and you having to wait to do it. Uh, it's frankly the easiest way to do it. I would not bother with the charts personally. I know there's a lot of people who go out of their way to provide these wonderfully detailed guides on how to do that. It's just not worth the time. Um, this is the easiest way by far. And even if you don't have Meseta to spare to buy like a ton of food devices, there's a really easy, simple thing to do about that. Over here, you probably have Photon Drops, and as you can see, Tifris, the Photon Drop Swapper, it, on the same counter as many of the other item exchangers, will exchange Photon Drops for many mag items, including food devices. You can also get support devices up here, as well as a few other neat little nifty things. But yeah, the point is, it's just the easiest way to do it, and you got multiple ways of getting these items, whether you just want to pay for it outright to get a massive amount of them, or if you have the uh, photon drops to spare, you can just buy a ton. It's no problem at all. Look at that. 30 of them takes about 60 photon drops. By the time you get to this point um, where you're really focusing on getting your mag up, you probably should do it pretty early on, but a lot of times you don't have to worry about it too much in the early game, but it'll help you out a lot in the end game. 
Uh, you're probably already getting like tons of these. I remember when I first looked at my actual photon drop stash, I had like 900 of them, uh, a couple of thousand uh, of them eventually. Um, it's really easy to do this, guys. Uh, definitely get your mags leveled up and make sure you keep them in the single stat if you really, really, really want to see them give you a good boost in the end game. Another mag-related item are evolution devices. These items alter the appearance of your mag in significant ways and are often distributed in AC scratches with limited uh, designs that people might be interested in. For example, I've got evolution device Mies, Sonic Doll, Surfer and Yao, and Morgana from Persona 5, as well as the Sega Genesis, although that one was not an AC scratch. These are often very expensive and particularly rare. You only really need one of them, but at the same time, you know, they're hard to get and then people want them very much. Um, the problem comes in that there's a misconception that, you know, if you use this to change your mag's form and then you were to, say, down the line, get another one that you liked, for example, if I use Morgana, and then later decided, oh, that Sonic one looks cool, but if you use it, um, the Morgana one's gone forever, and you can never get that back. That's not true. There's actually a fairly easy way to change this, and it's very often overlooked. If you go down here to the EX Cube Exchange Shop, or I call it the EX Cube Exchange Shop, it's called the Swap Shop, and you check in your Swap Shop, there is a mag form change pass. It's very cheap. It only costs one AC item. We're going to trade in one of our recycle badges for it, just for the purposes of this video. And then you come in here to your mag menu, you can use this uh, form change pass to change to any of the previous devices that you had used. For example, my Dreamcast one, or, you know, Lily Drum that's being used on one of my other mags. That's another thing to bring up, is that you can use it to change any of your mags that you have, if you happen to have multiple from the AC shop, to any of your other devices that you've ever used, period. Like, any time you use an evolution device on one of your mags, it is added to all of your mags. Now, for what it's worth, this is only per character. You cannot use a mag form change pass to change to a form that is registered on, say, Ursus when you're on Impara or something similar. Um, so, it's kind of like an accessory ticket, and now it's added to that character, and you can use it in many different outfits. In this case, it's added to this character, and you can use it on many different mags. Um, it's just you can't get it on multiple without buying more of those evolution devices. But that's a simple way of uh, changing your mag's form, and it kind of makes it to where, you know, you can get as many evolution devices as you want, use one of them on each character, on, on each mag, and then swap them whenever you feel like. You don't ever have to feel like you're losing out, that you're losing one of your previous evolution devices. And it's never really explicitly said that that's the case. So I just wanted to point that out there and give all of our newer players and even some of our veteran players who may not have known this, that little bit of information so that you can freely enjoy swapping these about whenever you want to. Say you want to be a shark for summer, you know, and then you want to change back to, say, um, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog or your Dreamcast, the coveted Dreamcast. It, you can absolutely do that. You may have noticed that in some missions, particularly exploration or expedition ones, that you're sometimes given an opportunity to select from multiple or several client orders from various characters across the Ark ship. For example, if I were to go in here and select Super Hard Dragon Altar Exploration, and then once that's done, I'm given an option to select and go through a menu with multiple mi missions, including my daily boost missions here, um, that would apply to this mission that could be completed in the, in, in the course of doing so. Um, that is something that is really helpful, but it only shows up for expeditions as far as I know. Um, that said, you know, I'm sure you've been wondering if you have been playing at all, you'd be like, hey, can I do that for other things? Or how can I get to do that for other things? Well, unfortunately you can't, uh, but there is something you can do that's just as good. Let's get out of here and we'll go look at it. Any quest that would normally just throw you right into the camp ship is going to be one of the ones that provides you the select client order window. However, if you have a quest that, for example, like advanced quest that normally doesn't throw you immediately into it and instead lets you stay outside after doing this little connection thing, you'll notice that you don't get the select client orders window. Instead for these, you can go into your start menu, move over to the globe here, uh, which is your quest menu, 
click on client orders and then go to orders that can be accepted in the fields of ongoing quests. This field is normally grayed out. It can only be selected when you have an outstanding uh, mission going on. Uh, you can only select it in the lobby as far as I know. When you open that, it'll bring up the select client order screen for you to pick from the different quests once more, this time relevant to this mission that we're in now, which is the advanced quest for the forest, I believe. Uh, this is a very easy way of making sure you're getting your uh, client orders around the ship done. It's very convenient because you can request these from right here at the counter instead of having to go all over the ship to get them. You still need to talk to your NPCs periodically to make sure that, uh, for example, if a new one has popped up, you have to talk to them so that client orders get unlocked for that person. And you'll still need to do certain client orders to unlock more client orders. But this is a helpful way of, say, you're just doing your dailies and you want to, or you're running advanced quests with your alliance, or you're doing many other things, you want to get a little bit of extra experience in Meseta, and some of these can actually pay out pretty well. Alright, last but not least, uh, Star Gems. Star Gems are a sort of freemium currency that you can pay for at a kind of a more expensive rate compared to AC. I think it's roughly double the price in terms of what they're worth. Um, they're pretty awesome because you can also get them in game though. Uh, and they're much more cheaper in that regard. Uh, you can get them from a number of things, whether it be uh, limited, weekly limited exchanges from your battle coins. Actually, let's go take a look at those. Um, we'll head down to the shopping plaza and over to our exchange counter, you have the battle coin barterer who has a limited item exchange and you can get several star gems for a relatively decent amount of battle coins that you'll have to play it for a couple hours to actually get enough to do it. You can also get them from the casino in a similar way. The prize uh, exchangers there will have a limited item exchange to get them out. Other forms of other ways of getting star gems are just logging in every day. Occasionally they'll have a thing where they give you a campaign uh, for them. There's also daily items, uh, daily login items that will also get you star gems um, that will come more frequently if you are premium. Uh, because you'll get more a day. Um, you can also complete the story, both on normal and on hardcore. The story itself is actually a wonderful way of getting star gems, um, but you can only get them once is the thing. Uh, you can also get them from titles and from, I think, your mission pass as well. So with all that said, here's what it comes down to. Most of these ways of getting star gems, with the exceptions of maybe the limited item exchanges, uh, are finite you will run out of these of these uh resources um you once you do all the story quests you cannot you can go back and do them again uh but you can no longer get the reward for doing them for example as you see up there it says you have already earned received the earned rewards so if i was going to do some of the older story quests like from episode three um in order to get say some star gems uh that's not a good example. There is that one. Uh, as, as you can see, that one gives you star gems. You can no longer get them from here. And a lot of, in a lot of ways, like your ARCS missions that would normally give you star gems, uh, your mission pass, you can't get uh, star gems from once you get them. A lot of these are very finite resources. Uh, star gems are a very desirable currency because they are used almost, they are the exclusive, almost exclusive currency for items in the Fresh Find shop, as well as for items in the SG shop which uh, include material storage, which is a wonderful purchase. If you can save up Star Gems at all and get this item, you absolutely should. Uh, it will just save you so much time in the long run. Um, and frankly, these are the things your Star Gems should absolutely be devoted towards. The, the call for caution comes from the fact that there's so many things throughout the game where you can use up your star gems on frivolous things that just aren't worth it. Like, for example, you're gathering. Uh, if you run out of gathering points in the middle of a mission, you can pay star gems to get them back. Uh, if you, if say you, um, hmm, say you're in the battle arena and you want to do, and you got the wrong thing out of your little scratch card at the end of each battle, um, you can use star gems to reroll. Uh, none of those things are worth it though you you have the fresh fine shop you have material storage in the SG shop and you have plenty of uh, star gem scratch tickets with plenty of nice little things in them that you can't get anywhere else and you should absolutely be saving your star gems for these 
because again you're going to get a nice good bit of them when you first start playing you start going through the story missions and you start going through your arcs missions and you uh, get these from your titles and all these other things but once those dry up they will start becoming much harder to come by uh, you know, there's plenty of strategies to keep getting star gems at a, early, a later level. Some of them involve, you know, getting premium items like, uh, not premium items, but AC items like outfits, like your outerwear, you can equip. And if they have this little symbol next to them, you can uh, wear them for like about 22 hours, I believe it is. And you'll be able to acquire star gems from them. Now, obviously that's more alt dependent. If you have say 10 alts, then you can get about a hundred star gems a day. Um, as long as you keep getting these. And in fairness, some of these are actually really cheap, especially the men's clothing items. As you can see, 353 is not a very high price, but I digress. The point is, uh, star gems are a very finite resource uh, that, you know, there are some renewable sources of them, but most of them are time locked and they are very expensive. So, and not just that, the items that you would normally purchase with Star Gems are very, very time sensitive. Like this will only be here for a day. Uh, your Star Gem scratches will only be here for a period of, I think, about six months. Um, and these are very hard to get unless you get that little almighty ticket at the bottom for scratching 40 times. And they each cost 80. It's just, again, it bears repeating. Save your Star Gems. You, there are things you're going to really, really, really want, and getting a couple of more harvesting points, getting another scratch on your battle coin uh, ticket is not going to be the things that is going to be the best use of your time or star gems. So I definitely recommend holding on to those, keeping hold of them, saving them up, building them up until you find something you really, really want, and then using them to spend them on that, because you're not going to be getting... Uh, to, the, the, the rate at which you get them when you first start is not going to continue into the late game. And that's about it for right now. Uh, it's about 30 minutes long at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and end it. We might make another one. I've got quite a few more other things that probably would help out, and I definitely would like to share them with you, but next time. Um, guys, I hope some of these tips have helped you out. If they have, uh, if you just enjoyed watching, Please leave a like, uh, subscribe, maybe check me out on Twitch. I stream uh, every other day and every other Saturday. Uh, I'd love to see you guys there. Uh, until then, uh, you guys take care and have a good one. May you guys get all the rare drops.